Well, let's go live to Queen's Park, where representatives from QP and the Ontario Council of Hospital Unions are speaking. Province in the country, uh, fewest in uh, in any developed economy. Uh, last year, uh, 2,096. Um, People died on waiting lists for surgery uh, in Ontario hospitals, and uh, we had another um, 9,400 patients who died waiting for MRIs and CAT scans. We had 145 of uh, 250 ER closures happen in this one province last year. And we have a hospital system uh, with 270,000 employees on paper, but 37,000 vacancies and, and an attrition rate of 12%. Uh, we have uh, nowhere near the capacity that we, that we need, and we're going to talk about that at length this morning. Over to you, Doug. Thank you, Michael. The nature of the crisis, inadequate staffing. Uh, in provinces outside of Ontario, there are 18% more staff per capita than in hospitals in Ontario. Much of this is due to uh, low inpa uh, inpatient services. As you can see here, we're missing 16,245 nursing and inpatient service workers. But it's throughout the whole sector. We see support services down 8,131 employees. Uh, also true in intensive care, minus 715, operating room, minus 2,310, two emergency uh, rooms, 1,883 fewer staff. The, the shortage occurs despite the fact that Ontario hospitals play a, a, a bigger than uh, average role in, for research, education and others as befits a rich, large province. Uh, in total, we're missing 33,778 full-time uh, staff, full-time equivalent staff compared to the other provinces. The staffing levels, instead of improving, are getting worse. Uh, Statistics Canada data suggests there's not been any real improvement in Ontario healthcare since uh, staffing since uh, uh, before the, the pandemic. In fact, we're down from a previous high uh, of 271,905 hospital staff, 260, and we're now down to 267,115 hospital staff, staff, according to Statistics Canada. That has not been made up for in any way by the other two uh, uh, healthcare subsectors, uh, nursing and residential care, and uh, a ambulatory care. Both of them are also down from previous highs. There's been no significant attempt to improve the capacity uh, of our health care uh, spending. And I want to be clear on this because uh, the government sometimes refers to hirings. Hirings are not the useful metric. The useful metric is the total number of, of, of staff that are actually working in, in the sector because people are fleeing, fleeing the healthcare sector because of the uh, difficult working conditions and the attack on wages from the uh, provincial government. There, in fact, has been a long-term decline in the this, this spending by hospitals in Ontario on co uh, compensation for employees. We're down from a high, and you'll see this on page five of the brief, from 64 uh, percent of, of uh, hospital spending on staff down to 59 percent a significant decline. This is not something that is inherent to hospitals, it's just a, a something that has occurred in Ontario. The rest of Canada has seen staffing compensation increase from 65% to 67%. There is a large, large gap between Ontario and the rest of Canada. There is also a very significant shortage of hospital workers. Job vacancies in hospitals have grown dramatically. Right now, for the service and support staff at hospitals, there's 5,161 service job vacancies. That is uh, 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 almost tr triple the rate that existed in March of 2018. Very similar dynamics for nurses. For example, for registered practical nurse positions, they have a vacancy rate of 11.89%, even higher than the support service staff of uh, just over 10% uh, job vacancy. 
the RPN vacancy rate is now more than double what it was uh, just uh, uh, when this government was elected, more than double since this government has elected. And in fact, Statistics Canada data takes it back, the data back even further than the hospital data does. It goes back to 2015. We can see that the, the number of job vacancies have actually, has actually tripled, tripled since, uh, since 2015. We started at a, 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 a sort of a normal level of around 5,000 job vacancies in hospitals. We're now uh, coming on very strong to uh, just under 20,000 job vacancies in Ontario. The problem is not getting better. In the rest of the economy, we've seen a significant drop in job vacancies uh, over the last year. Uh, uh, an 18% drop, drop in job vacancies. In hospitals, it's gotten much worse. We have seen a 19.3% increase in the number of job vacancies on Ontario hospitals. That's uh, an increase of 4,000 uh, 4, job vacancies. What are the consequences? Very significant closures of ERs. This is a totally new phenomenon that's uh, uh, afflicting uh, rural uh, and small town Ontario. Uh, as Michael mentioned, 145 closures documented by the uh, Financial Accountability Office in 2022. These closures continue with hundreds more in 2023. Carleton Place, Hawkesbury, Walkerton, Arnprior, Listowel, St. Mary's, Clinton, Durham, Almont, Seaforth, Mount Forest, Chesley, uh, 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 so far this year. And of course, we've had the permanent closure of the Minden emergency room. Very troubling prospect for the future of rural Ontario. Presumably, this would be the base of the Ford government, but instead, they're seeing health care in that sector erode very rapidly. The government promised, ran on almost no promises in 2018, but, uh, but the one promise they did say was that they would end hallway health care. In fact, it's much worse now. There's been a 22% increase in the number of people who are being treated in hospital hallways. We're at a record high of 1,289 patients being treated in, hallway, uh, in, in hospital hallways. Complete failure on that front. Uh, surgeries, even when the hospitals weren't uh, restricting uh, ad, ad, ad admission in 22-23 due, due, due to uh, COVID, uh, surgeries are far down from what they were prior to COVID. We're now at 4,523 fewer surgeries per month than in 2019. 4,523 fewer surgeries. That's 8.4% fewer surgeries than in 2019. Surgical wait times in 2022-23 were 49% longer than prior to, to, uh, to uh, the pandemic. 107,000 patients are waiting longer than the maximum clinical guidelines for their surgeries. That's an all-time high. Uh, it's, there is, but for all of these phenomena, instead of a plan to deal with that crisis and to solve it, we have a plan from the provincial government, from the Ford government, that will make it worse. The government's plan over the next decade is 3,000 new hospital beds. That's an, an increase of about 8.4% in nominal capacity, about 0.79% per year. This will mean a sharp drop in service levels given population growth and aging. The nominal increase will not even come close to covering off increased demand for services due to population growth which will be, according to the Ministry of Finance, the Ontario Ministry of Finance, about 15% over that same time period. It's about half of the actual population growth, but it gets much worse. As you'll see on page 13 of the brief, healthcare is very sensitive to aging and our population is, rage, is aging rapidly. The, the over 65 population is growing at twice the rate of the normal population, and this will drive need for hospital and healthcare services very significantly. Worse 
the oldest parts of the over 65 population, the plus 75 and the plus 90 age groups, are growing even faster, even faster. The plans for the, by the provincial government and for the immediate future are only for 1,000 beds over the next four years. That's even worse than their 10-year their plan. Uh, aging has not been planned for for decades, and that's how we got into this capacity crisis. It's become much more apparent in the last few years. It should be planned for now, but it's not. The plan is to double down on the hospital capacity crisis and make it worse. Our estimate of what is needed to deal with the aging and capacity crisis based upon the growth in the over 65 population and the overall and the, and the under 65 population is a, a, a need for, to increase capacity by 9% over four years, 9%. That in itself is 3,288 beds, more than three times what the government has planned uh, to do. But that, that 3,288 would only just keep pace with uh, capacity uh, with, and keep, keep capacity at the same crisis level we have now. We think it's entirely reasonable that the government plan on an urgent basis to improve the capacity of our, of our health care system by adding staff. We think this can be done at a rate of 3% per year. And based upon that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, estimate, we see the need for a 22.39% increase per year over four years combining both aging population and an attempt to end the capacity crisis, or at least to ameliorate the cap capacity crisis. That means for Ontario, we need to add an extra 60,000 hospital staff over the next four years. We've been listening to representatives from CUPE uh, and the Ontario Council of Hospital Unions. They've been speaking at Queen's Park in regards to the situation in our health care system, talking about the fact that hospitals are missing over 30,000 staff, that the situation continues to get worse, and that the job vacancies have tripled.